Hey everyone, it's Brooke from Art with a Heart. Today we have a fun project called the Echo Flower that we will be making today. So you just need paper, pencil, a black Sharpie, um, just basic markers, even the ones that come in your art to go bags, and a few colored pens or Sharpie pens. I hope you guys follow along and have fun. Let's get started. Okay, so we are going to start with drawing a flower. My flower that I drew was inspired by a hibiscus flower, but if you want to make your flower any other shape or type of flower, you can definitely do that. I just start with the petals. So these petals are kind of skinnier at the bottom and then they go out wide and just have some natural ridges and curves in them. And there are five of them, so just drawing the petals. You don't really need to look any certain perfect way. And then we do this, the little center part, which is just a line, a line, and a bunch of dots. And then we'll come down here and draw our stem, and it's just kind of curved slightly. and a couple of leaves. And that's it for sketching the flower. Next, we are gonna grab our markers, just the regular Crayola markers or whatever you have on hand. The thicker ones are preferred for this project. Um, the skinny ones just might take you a long time, but you can use them too. Um, and with this project, what we're doing is something to make it look really cool is making the flower all warm colors and then the background cool colors or vice versa. So if you want your flower to be cool colors and then your background to be warm colors, you can do that too. So warm colors, we have yellow, orange, red, and pink. So these are our warm colors. So when we think of warm colors, we think of colors that remind us of the sun, pretty much. And we will take our yellow and as I'm drawing this, I hold the marker on the side so I can really get some thick marker strokes on the paper. So that way it covers more ground and we can also give it the effect to where some of them aren't, some of them aren't touching and then other others overlap. So it just gives us a little bit of, of it kind of captures the texture of the flower petals because when you look at a hibiscus flower petal, it has a lot of like um, almost like liney texture and that's kind of what we're capturing with the flower and in the background. Hope that makes sense. So pressing down on the side, I'm giving it a good amount of pressure but you don't have to press too hard. I just, some of them kind of overlap, some of them don't touch. I kind of like these white spaces that it leaves. It's almost like shadows and highlights.
And with this part, I'm just gonna go ahead and co color over it rather than trying to avoid it. And then we'll add more color to it afterwards. Just makes things a little easier. Right, and the last petal. All right, and there we have it for the yellow. Um, after that, we can do the stem. I did my stem orange. You can feel free to do it any other color. Obviously it's not the natural color of the stem, but again, I'm doing my warm colors on the inside and cool colors on the outside. Just part of the style for this. So similar, just one long sweeping marker stroke, kind of pressing down to give it a little bit more width so I cover more paper so I just did that in two swipes pretty much and then we have our pink flowers which I colored pretty similarly in style to the petals so same technique And there we go. Then I um, added the little details for this part. So we have, I just trace the lines that I made with pencil and then add some more lines inside of it. And I used my orange to trace these, the little circle part. And there we have it. So for this part, I, I did outline it with the black. You don't have to outline it, but I think it gives it some kind of just clean edges. And I like the look of that. Ooh, this pen to sharpen it. I need a better sharpie. All right. Nothing better than a brand new Sharpie. All right, and now that that is done, we can move on to the background. So the background, as I mentioned before, is going to be in cool colors. 
This color here is a little bit warmer than I intended it to be. It came out of a Sharpie that looked like it was gonna be cooler, but. So if you have a little bit of mixed in, warm colors mixed in, that's okay too. But for the most part, we're trying to do our cool colors. So that would be green, blue, and purple. And then I have the corresponding um, smaller Sharpie pens, which I just used to do these lines. So if you don't have Sharpie pens, you can just forego the, the line details and that's okay too. So I started with the purple and I used the similar technique when as I did when I was drawing the flower. So I'm trying to just get thick lines without having to even do more, um, more drawing than I have to. So I just did that all in one thick line as opposed to trying to do it with the tip and do it like color it in. It's just a more efficient way and I like the way it looks too. It just looks like a cleaner line. So, and feel free to turn your paper as you do it. It's kind of hard to keep it all in one, keep it still without turning around as you do it. So I just turn my paper as needed Right, and so I'm basically just making this background alternating between solid lines and the liney lines. So, um, and that's a technical term, <laughs> just kidding. But, so I'm taking my thin Sharpie for this next one and I'm going to not, I'm gonna start with the outline of the line before I start doing all these like individual little marks. So just taking it like this. And the farther away you do it from the other color, the less lines you will do on the background. So however big you want your lines to be, it just depends if you want it to be really detailed and a lot of lines in the background, then make it closer. And if you want it to be less lines and colors in the background, make it further away from the purple. And it can kind of just drag off of the edge of the page too. And then I just start making the lines. 
and I just think it's a cool texture that it creates. Fits onto the overall style of this particular artwork. Okay, and next color I'm using is blue. And as we're doing our solid lines, I like to put the tip against the previous color so that way I'm free to make it be as thick as I want it to be without it getting onto the other colors that I've already done. So that's why I turn my paper and I make it so that it's an easy position for me to do it that way. Okay, and then the next one is purple, skinny purple. So we're just 
basically going purple, green, blue. That is our pattern. And then our little lines inside. Okay, and then doing our thick green line. And then next we have our skinny blue line. So it just gets to be pretty repetitive for this, which is kind of nice sometimes when you're doing art because you just 
you can just kind of not really have to think too hard about what you're doing and it can be relaxing. Is that my 30 minute timer? And we have officially made our way back to our purple. Very first color we started with. Our skinny green.
back to our thick blue. And our skinny purple. our thick green and we're almost to the end of our paper Skinny blue and After this, we're done with this side of the paper and we'll just be doing, filling in the rest of the space on this side, which we're almost done with as well. And, and then last we have our blue. So just fill in the remaining space. Oh, I just realized I forgot a spot. And just go ahead and fill in this last little bit with the blue. And we're done with the background and 
you can feel free to add more details to your flower. If you wanna go back and outline each line with black, we can do that. Just some extra fun little lines on the leaves. Gonna take this peachy color, do some little bit of lines on the petals. All right, and there we have it. Looks pretty complete to me. Feel free to add any finishing touches that you think it needs, but other than that, we're done for today. So good job. I hope you guys had fun. Follow along next time, bye.